Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this chicken in pastels. So this is a 12 inch by 16 inch on pastel mat. The reference photo really caught my eye and I just had to create something out of it. So um, without further ado, let's get on to the video. I'm working on my usual Claire Fontaine pastel mat card and I've just taped the edges down onto a board with some acid free masking tape and this is just so it stays still and flat and so that I have a nice border of untouched paper to hold onto at the end without smudging my artwork or getting pastel on my fingers and it also makes it a bit easier to frame. I've started by blocking in the underlayer with some Conti pastel sticks. It's just a really loose layer to get some colour down. And then I blend this layer out with my fingers to make sure it's pressed into the tooth of the paper so I can add more layers on top. Here I'm using a pan pastel and a soft tool, S-O-F-F-T, to block in the dark background and then I'll go back and add some more layers to this bit later on. I like working on the mid-tone papers, especially for subjects that have large black or white areas because it's easier to see how dark or light I'm going. And the paper under my hand is just a regular printer paper to stop my hand from smudging the artwork. Sometimes I use glycine, but it doesn't really matter. I always try to over-exaggerate the colours I'm seeing in the reference photo, especially in the first couple of layers because they show through into the end layers and it stops the piece looking flat. And this is really important when it comes to black and white fur or feathers because it makes it look a lot more interesting and more realistic if you add a bit more of those subtle colours than what's in your reference. And I find that the more that you paint or draw, the easier it will be to see these hidden colours. But an easy way to find them, find them in your reference is by using an eyedropper tool on a program like Photoshop because you can see exactly what the colour is and where it is on the colour wheel just to get a better idea of the colours that you can use in your artwork. You don't have to buy Photoshop. There are free programs online that do the same thing as Photoshop and have this tool as well. I switch between a harder pastel stick like the Conti stick or pan pastels or pastel pencils in the first few layers just because they fill up the tooth less than if you went straight in with the softer pastels and this lets you add more layers on top afterwards. I save these softer and more vibrant pastels to use in the last few layers to do the final details or to hype up any of the colours that I want more saturated because they lay on top better than the harder pastels do. Sometimes you'll see me blend out with a cotton tip and this is a useful tip for smaller areas that you don't want to smudge too much with your fingers. I'm going through with the pastel pencils and I'm sharpening up some of the edges to start to refine the piece a bit. The way that I work in pastels is very much a layering process. I just have to keep in mind that there is a limit to how many layers you can add. If you add too much pastel in the first few layers, you won't be able to add more layers effectively afterwards. So it's really hard to get the fine detail in the last layers if you've gone too heavy in the first few. And it's really just trial and error. The more that you practice using pastels, the more you know how much you can actually add to the surface that you're using. And it's different with every surface as well. So if you're not using a sanded paper, you won't be able to get as many layers as if you are using a sanded paper and you can get some sanded papers that have more grit than the one that I'm using now which does allow you to add a little bit more layers but any of the sanded papers that I've used that did have more grit I find that it looks more grainy in the end as well. I'm just in the process of building up some of the detail in the face and then smudging it into the surface so that I can add more layers of detail. So I'm smudging out some of those pencil strokes with cotton tips or my fingers. So moving on to the neck area, I'm starting to block in the base layers with the pastel pencils and the sticks again. And I'm just picking the pencils depending on which brand has the colour that I want. I did the first layer of feathers on the neck really quite messy, but I'll be blending that out to make it look a bit smoother and I'll also be adding more layers in the end. 
My goal of this piece was to have the face, especially the eye, in focus and to have less focus on the upper crest and on the neck. And I did this by not adding as much detail in these areas, so I don't want to detract from the emotion in the eyes by having all of the detail in every single feather, so it is going to look a little bit blurrier in the end anyway. So I'm just going for the general gist of the feathers, making sure that they're roughly the right shape and size and going in the right direction and just letting the viewer's mind fill in the blanks rather than adding in every single little detail. I decided to use the pan pastels in this layer because the actual shape of the soft tool that I was using gave the look that I was after with the shape of the feathers. So I'm going back in with some lighter colours to add some more contrast to the lighter areas and adding a little bit of detail to the parts that were a bit blurred out where I wanted more detail. In this piece, I wanted to show the emotion that I saw in the reference photo. And to me, the eyes in particular showed determination and strength, despite obviously being trapped in a cage. And I feel like this can relate to people when they're feeling trapped at some point in their life, but having the determination and strength may help you get through that situation. So I really wanted to make the eyes pop in this piece to emphasize that emotion. I'm using a softer pastel stick to add the really bright details to the white feathers and then blending it out so it's not so grainy looking. So this is how the final piece turned out. It's a bit hard to get the right colour on camera because the background is actually a flat black with no variation, but you get the general idea. If you guys are on Facebook or Instagram, I have links in the description to those pages, or you could just search Kirsty Rebecca Fine Art and follow me over there. If you liked this quick tutorial, please check out my other videos for some more tips and tricks. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.